Fred Keller grew up on his father's farm in Cynthiana, Kentucky, but his connection and love of airplanes came as natural to him as growing the wheat and tobacco on the farm. It was exciting to have the planes come up from Lexington and land on the runway on his farm. His uncle Howard owned and operated Kentucky Aerospray from his grandfather's farm on Ironworks Pike near Lexington. His father owned a two-seat tandem Aronica Champ, and Fred would often help roll the plane out of the hangar and join his dad on Sunday flights, sometimes taking the controls. He helped with refueling and loading spray chemicals in his uncle's planes, and later would sell services to farmers and locate their farms on aerial maps. Fred Keller attended Millersburg Military Institute for two years, but graduated from Flemingsburg High School in 1960. After high school, one year at the University of Kentucky and two years in the Army as a teletype repairman, Fred went to work as an installer for General Telephone of Kentucky. He became interested in building model airplanes when he was just six or seven years old. First with simple rubber-powered and then motorized free flight, control line, and eventually radio-controlled models. He continued to learn more about aviation through experimentation and play. One day a friend asked, when are you going to build something big enough to ride in? After moving to Alaska in 1965 with his brother George, Fred began taking flying lessons. He bought his first plane, a Taylor Craft, in 1970. He then began building the first of five planes, the KR-1. All of his planes would be built using composite construction, foam, epoxy, fiberglass, and would have the same paint scheme of brown and yellow trim over white with the prospector symbol of gold pan pick and shovel. The KR-1 was the forerunner of the modern composite aircraft, a single-place Volkswagen engine-powered aircraft with a wingspan of 17 feet and a cruise speed of 145 miles per hour. Fred completed his construction in just 11 months, just in time for the 1973 EAA Air Venture in Oshkosh. Since he did not have the required flying hours, Fred and a friend loaded the plane in a trailer. They traveled 1,200 miles down the Alcan Highway and another 2,600 miles across to Oshkosh. Fred's KR-1 received the best auto-powered home-built award and much attention for craftsmanship. After the show, they trailered the plane and made the 3,800-mile return trip to Anchorage. On several subsequent trips, this plane would be recognized as the smallest passenger-carrying aircraft to fly from Alaska to Oshkosh. The second plane was a very ease, a tandem two-place with retractable nose gear, 85 horsepower, and a Continental engine. This plane won the Best Very Ease and Outstanding Workmanship Awards in 1978 at Oshkosh. Fred refinished and refined the plane in 1979 and 1980, winning the Grand Champion Home Build Award at Oshkosh in 1980 and the Wright Brothers Award in Dayton, Ohio in 1981. The Wright Brothers Award was presented by the niece of Orville and Wilbur, Ivernet Wright Miller and the founder of EAA, Paul Pobernese. Next came the Defiant Prototype number 2. This was a four-place retractable nose gear powered by two 150 horsepower Lycoming engines with a cruise speed of 200 miles per hour. This plane had a fold-down rear seat for load carrying or it could sleep too. Burt Rattan designed and built the first Defiant and contracted with Fred to build the second one from shop plans and document its progress. Fred's prototype Defiant won designer awards at Oshkosh in 1983. Next was the Prospector, serial number 001. This plane was of Fred's own design and construction. The design was a bush airplane that could handle good loads and perform well on the short bush airstrips in Alaska. It's a mid-wing, side-by-side, two-seat sport plane that could sleep two with a useful load of 978 pounds. It cruised at 145 miles per hour and stalls at 32 miles per hour with short takeoff and landing performance. The Prospector won the Grand Champion Home Build Award at Oshkosh in 1989. This airplane was seen intact for only a short time at the beginning of judging and then experienced a belly-up landing in a wheat field during a photo mission. However, the accident gave the judges a rare opportunity to view the excellent craftsmanship of its construction. Fred became the first person to win two Grand Champion Awards for different airplanes at Oshkosh. The last airplane he designed and built was the Prospector, serial number 002. This plane was the same as the Prospector serial number 001, except with a 180 horsepower engine, constant speed prop, side stick controls, and more creature comforts. Fred returned to his original love of building model airplanes. He has coached local and middle high school students in design and construction of rubber-powered balsa wood indoor airplanes. 
His students have finished at or near the top in state science Olympiad each year, and many have competed in the national science Olympiad and received bronze, silver, and gold awards. Fred is a member and technical advisor of the EAA and an active member of the Alaska Radio Control Society and Academy of Model Aeronautics. Fred's excellence in composite construction has taken a different turn recently, which has given him more notoriety. He transformed his father-in-law's 1976 Mazda pickup frame and engine into a drivable radio flyer wagon. The radio flyer has been shown in Las Vegas and Charlotte and has been mentioned in Popular Science, Family Circle, the National Enquirer, and newspapers internationally and in all 50 states. It is therefore fitting that Fred Keller, a master of composite construction and design of experimental aircraft, be enshrined into the Kentucky Aviation Hall of Fame of the Commonwealth of Kentucky.